Are you trying to go out and take some photos of the waterfalls, but you have no idea really how? Well, you've came to the right video. So you've been out to the waterfalls before and you brought your camera, you tried to take a bunch of photos, but none of the photos really met your expectations. But that's okay, because we've got this video now and I'm gonna chop it up pretty good because I want it to be as short as possible. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Most likely when you're going out to the falls, you're gonna experience some rough roads. Those are national forest roads and they're not paved. They're gravel and sometimes have very deep trenches. Be careful and try to take a car that can handle it. A simple rule is to bring your tripod. It's going to be easy to frame a shot and then make slight adjustments. And if you wanna focus, stack, or do anything complicated, you can keep your shot framed the exact same way every time. Well, and of course, long exposure photography helps for that. Try to use a camera that has an interchangeable lens and put your widest lens on it. Or if you have a zoom lens and you're limited, just try to zoom out all the way so that you have the widest angle possible. 14 millimeters is optimal, 16 is pretty good, 18 is all right, and 24 is pushing it. Try to bring a lens cleaning cloth. Well, always try to bring one, but bring a couple because they're gonna get wet. But then a good thing to help with this is to bring a microfiber towel. Those microfiber towels will help you dry off your lens faster and then you could finish it off with the cleaning cloth. Try to show up as early as possible or when it's an overcast day because the key thing here is light. If you have too much of it and it's broad daylight, it's gonna potentially hit the waterfall. That white water is gonna turn to way overexposed in your photo. Most likely that means there's a lot of people at the waterfall. So the best way to avoid people is to show up when the weather is bad, AKA overcast, or to show up early. I would recommend going on Instagram and searching hashtags or locations to see kind of what the conditions are at the waterfall itself. Like for example, there might be a heavy flow, which could translate to brown or murky water, but just go on the internet, kind of do your research, just look at the photos and kind of see what you're going into. When you get to the waterfall and you're trying to find a place to take a photograph, I would recommend hiking all the way down to where the waterfall pools up or like the base where it turns into a creek because you can get some good foreground there that leads you into the waterfall, truly just trying to make a good composition. So when it comes to composing your photograph, rethink how you adjust your camera angle. If you want to go horizontal, vertical, change your shot really it just means adjusting your angle and what's in your frame. Choose what you you like to see what you like about the photograph and put that in your frame but ideally what I like to do is take foreground from that creek and make it kind of lead your eyes up to the waterfall or maybe vice versa you see the waterfall it leads you down you follow the creek with that photo in my opinion the longer you look at a photo the better it is so give the viewer something to look at more interesting than just the waterfall get the creek and the waterfall or you know just really all the environment around it what do you think is best about it? And try to make that photo unique to you. Do not put your tripod in the water. A lot of people don't realize this, but when you put your tripod in the water, that rushing river right on by through your tripod legs is gonna shake your tripod. You might not notice it, but when you get home, go on the computer and look at that photo close up, you're gonna think, why the heck is it blurry? Well, that river rushing by, hitting your tripod legs is actually wobbling it a little. So I would say use the rocks around you, probably the one you're standing on because you crossed rocks to get to the spot you're at. Use those rocks and some around it to put your tripod. It's gonna take some weird manipulating and you're gonna have to move your tripod leg so it looks like it's all spread out funky. That's okay, as long as your shot is stable. Speaking of a stable shot, you're gonna want to turn off any sort of vibration reduction in your camera. A lot of cameras have that vibration reduction. It works, but the thing is, when you're set up on a tripod, any sort of wobble it sees in the frame, it's gonna think there's shake and try to add shake reduction. It's gonna make your photo blurry because it's gonna think there's adjusting that needs to be done. You don't need the adjusting in camera. You're doing it yourself. If you don't have a polarizer, I would highly recommend buying one or getting one somehow because it actually takes the reflections off the water. So if you take a photo and you see a lot of reflections, that water close to you that looks like a creek, it turns to white in a long exposure because there's a reflection happening. You're getting the clouds or the sky in your photo. You take that polarizer and adjust it to the right spot and it's gonna almost completely remove all reflections in your photo, which is pretty cool. And also it adds a little bit of contrast too, so that helps. But Photoshop, Lightroom, all the photo editing programs can't do this effect. So I would highly recommend getting one or if you have one, definitely use it. So when shooting, turn your camera to manual mode. I highly recommend manual for all reasons, but mainly to keep your aperture at a high number, but not too high. Once you start getting into f22, that's crazy. You're going to start bringing in diffraction problems. So I would recommend shooting from f8 to f14 or somewhere in there, because what that does is it gets everything kind of in focus from the foreground to the background. Now you need to focus. This could go two ways. The advanced way is to take two photos, focus on the rocks in the 
front, take the photo, focus on the rocks near where the water is falling, take the photo, after, blend them together. For the beginning photographer, I would just say focus on the rocks where the water is falling, like on the sides of the waterfall, and then take the photo. That should be good enough. And when you're focused, you're gonna wanna zoom in and look at the screen, just cross-reference to see that everything is crystal clear. Basically, what you just gotta do is plan your photograph. Beginners don't plan, pros plan. So take that and run with it. The better you wanna get, the better you gotta plan, but at least now you know some tips and tricks as well. Take your waterfall photos and love them. <laughs> now all you have is excuses. The only thing stopping you is you now. So go out there, have fun, take care, see you in the next video. So you're headed out to watch the waterfall. Watch them. Your little camera, get a little photo of a little waterfall. <laughs> but none of them really turned out like they thought they would. They thought they can think. Really turned out like your expectations thought they would. Your expectations have thoughts. Try to bring, <laughs> try to bring, is to bring a microfiber, fiber, <laughs> and illuminate it way too much to where it's overcast, or <laughs> freak. You have to manipulate, <laughs> manipulate. The water river wa rushing, <laughs> Like I'm saying, not, not, not. <laughs> you know, I could get way too advanced with that. We're trying to stay basic here. So screws up your photos, okay? Beat the sun and you beat the people. Beat the people. Take advantage of this video that I just gave you. And you know, 